Hello and welcome. I'm happy to introduce a new series that I am putting together called Wick Lit, where I will be exploring different texts. This will be a reading of these texts by me, and as a disclaimer, I have no affiliation with National Geographic, which is the text I will be reading first called Atlas of the Bible, Exploring the Holy Lands, and they have no affiliation with me. The opinions and views expressed are solely mine. And with that said, let's get started. Table of Contents, Introduction, The Stories of the Hebrew Bible, Part 1. This part highlights key narratives from the creation to the great flood, from the sojourn in Egypt to the exodus and the promised land, and from the rise of the Israelite kingdoms to the conquest of Assyria and Neo-Babylonia. Part 2. The Stories of the Christian Bible. This part highlights key narratives from the four Gospels that form the core of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as well as stories from the Acts of the Apostles, and the letters of Paul. Illustration credits. A rare 12th century map shows Jerusalem during the period of Crusader rule. A view of the Dead Sea from Herod's stronghold of Masada, later used by the Zealots during the First Jewish War. Christ and the Fisherman was painted by Russian artist Karli Marko the Younger. 1822 to 1891. Introduction. The Geography of the Bible from Genesis to the Gospels. No other book has been of greater influence on the development of Western civilization than the Bible. It is the foundational text of Judaism and Christianity and accepted as divinely inspired scripture by Islam. But the Bible is also a superbly geographical narrative. Its stories take place across the full breadth of the ancient Near East, particularly the crescent-like territory curving from Egypt and Israel to Syria and Mesopotamia, today's Iraq, which scholars refer to as the Fertile Crescent. At the center of this crescent lies a narrow strip of land that was alternatively known as Canaan, Israel, Judea, and Palestine. A bottleneck in the principal trade routes between Egypt and Mesopotamia, this narrow ribbon became the Holy Land, from where both Judaism and Christianity would emerge. Across the vast canvas of the Fertile Crescent, the Bible presents us with a dazzling portrayal of battles, conquests, and tribal migrations. Empires rise and fall, mighty cities are built and destroyed, and floods, drought, and other natural disasters wipe away the labor of generations. At the same time, this region is shaped by great civilizations, from Egypt and Assyria to the world of Greece and Rome all of which produce great works of literature, but none of these literary works rivals the religious depth, longevity, and moral re relevance of the Bible. The reason, perhaps, is that the biblical narrative is fundamentally the, the story of families, of men and women who set out to fulfill their destinies in a world bequeathed and ruled by God. It is the very human quality of these stories that contributes to the Bible's enduring appeal. The Stories of the Hebrew Bible, from the Torah to the Book of the Prophets and the Writings. The Hebrew Bible, or what Christians call the Old Testament, is organized in three distinct groupings. The collection known as the Torah, or the Law, forms the first five books of Hebrew Scripture, also known as the Five Scrolls of Moses. It includes the stories of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The principal stories in Part 1, from Adam to Noah, and from Abraham to Moses takes us from the stories of creation to the great flood and from the sojourn in Egypt to the Exodus. The collection known as the Prophets, Nevi'im, includes the books of the so-called former prophets, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings, 
and latter prophets, including Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and the Twelve Minor Prophets. This division tells the epic saga of Israel's monarchy, from the settlement in the Promised Land to the split of Solomon's realm into a northern and southern kingdom. The collection ends with the capture of Jerusalem by Neo-Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar in 586 BCE. The grouping known as the Writings, Ketuvim, includes the poetic books of Psalms, Proverbs, and Job. The so-called Five Scrolls, Hamesh Megillot of Song of Songs, Ruth, Lamentations, Ecclesiastes, and Esther, the books of Chronicles, as well as the books of Ezra and Nehemiah that take us into the per Persian era, 537 to 332 BCE. The extra-canonical books of Maccabees continue the story into the Greek period under the Ptolemies and Seleucids, though not included in the Jewish canon. The Maccabees do appear in a Greek translation known as the Septuagint and the Christian Old Testament. Adam and Eve in Paradise In seven days, says Genesis, God created the firmament of the heavens and the earth and all the living things. He then decided to make man in his own image after his own likeness. God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. This is reflected in Adam's name. The root Adama in Hebrew means earth. But Adam was lonely, so God created Eve. They were both naked, but their innocence prevented them from experiencing shame or knowing good and evil. The Lord then planted a garden in Eden with every tree that is pleasant for the sight and good for food. And in this garden he put the man whom he had formed. Genesis 2, 8, and 9. The meaning of the word Eden is uncertain, although a Babylonian cuneiform tablet uses it as a term for uncultivated plain. Other scholars see the Aramaic word for well-watered as its source. Many centuries later, during the Babylonian exile, when the Genesis tradition came under Persian influence, the Garden of Eden acquired a new name, Paradise. The term is rooted in the old Persian word paradis, which means walled or protected enclosure, usually referring to park-like estates maintained for the king's comfort. Regardless of where this mythical Shangri-La may have existed, the description in the Bible leaves little doubt about the true significance of Eden. It was everything that the harsh Arabian desert was not. In the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden had many trees and Adam was encouraged to eat from every branch except from the branches of the so-called tree of knowledge of good and evil. In the day that you eat of it, God warned you shall surely die. Genesis 2.17 As long as Adam was content to live in a state of perpetual innocence, all of his physical needs would be met.